हे फोक वेलकम बैक टू अनदर पार्ट ऑफ सिनेरियो बेस्ड सॉफ्टवेयर टेस्टिंग इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन देयर आर अदर टू पार्ट्स व्हिच इज ऑलरेडी बीन अपलोडेड प्लीज चेक देम एज़ वेल बिफोर वी बिगिन इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड हाउ डू यू डिसाइड व्हेन यू हैव टेस्टेड इनफ सो दिस इज मोस्ट कॉमन क्वेश्चन दैट अराइजेस how do you stop at what time you consider stopping the testing right if we reach testing deadlines or release deadlines that is where we consider yes this is the time to stop the testing now by reaching the decided pass percentage of the test cases how much maximum is passed based on that we will decide whether we can move forward or not if the risk in the project is under the acceptable limit sometimes if there is more risk in uh, releasing it to the production once we give sign off right we will have to release it to the production sometimes if there is challenge in that or risk involved in that at that time we cannot take risk but when we see that there is no such risk found okay at that time we can give the sign off and we'll decide this is much of testing is enough if all the high priority bugs and blockers are fixed so whatever the bugs or issues we log for that particular uh, ticket if those are fixed okay then also we can consider we can stop the testing so there are no further issues that is found for that particular ticket so that time we can consider closing it if we meet or met the acceptance criteria once we find that we have no blockers or no defects found and there are no much risks involved in uh, giving sign off and all the requirements whatever is described is met so all these things we will consider okay uh, to say that this much of testing is enough okay so these are the points that you can talk about and if you really have any examples with your previous experience that also you can mention so certain times you uh, how, how do you decide it that this much testing is enough you can give the example based on your experience also tell some key points to consider while writing a book okay some of the things that you consider before logging a bug there are some of the things that you have to do from your end to make sure that that is a real bug rather than logging it as a duplicate or a, a bug which is not relevant okay first try to reproduce the bug two to three times okay if it is happening again and again then you can think of right and what is the next step use some keywords to your bug and search in the defect tracking tool suppose in case of jira you can search with suppose uh, in case the application itself is not loading okay you can search with whatever the application you are using just give some keywords and try to search if there is any previous defect that anyone had logged for a similar kind of issue okay you can reopen the same or also you can uh, say that this is what the resolution you can follow if they have mentioned it in comment you can refer to them saying that so you can refer this bug so this has happened already so that also you can give some much information check in similar modules if that is happening you can just give a try in other modules or other browsers okay different types or you can refer to some other documentations if available before you judge that yeah you confirm that that is an issue report the problem immediately so as soon as you uh, find it and you just refer few of the things and then you find that you finally concluded that this yes, this is a defect then report that defect immediately right detailed steps to reproduce the bug so this is where most of the uh, testers do not uh, fail uh, why because if you do not provide the steps to reproduce the developers might not be knowing how to reproduce it okay if you are coordinating between onshore and offshore 
that is a difficult task so it is better you provide a detailed step what after what you have done to uh, so that you got this exact issue so how they can reproduce it so this is important step advisable to illustrate the issue by using proper screenshot whatever screenshot or you can also attach the recording so that you can mention so these are the steps i can i will perform okay whenever the interviewer asks so you can say that i will try to reproduce the issue for multiple times and i'll search in the jira or whatever defect tracking tool you are using and if i found that is an uh, you know that is the same instance that is occurring i can refer this ticket and also i can check in the different modules and report it i'll be reporting it immediately and my next step is to log it as a bug uh, while logging it as a bug i'll provide a detailed steps to reproduce so that it will be helpful for the developers okay to reproduce the issue and also i will provide the proper screenshots or the recordings whatever is required okay for them to uh, for, for you to prove you are proving that there is a defect right proofread your bug report uh, twice or thrice before posting it so bug report whatever you before you log it just read it uh, twice or thrice or you can get it reviewed from your seniors or someone also okay so that um, it should be understandable major concern is it should be understandable so if you say that all these points that you consider so the interview will uh, interviewer will get to know that yes you are following a right a strategy or the right thing while uh, before logging a defect okay when will be the cross browser testing done okay cross browser testing is a type of non functional test which helps us to ensure that our website or the web application works as expected in various web browsers okay uh, so you can just give an brief of what exactly is cross browser testing and when you will be performing it is the question right so basically based on the number of users using the application on different browsers we consider them for testing and it is completely a need based testing way uh, we will be performing it so what exactly uh, we consider before doing the cross browser testing is Uh, suppose some of the applications is made only for android users so then you don't have to worry about ios okay in the same way some of the websites will be designed only for the chrome users okay at that time you don't have to worry about other browsers but some of the applications they have to see the compatibility of how these applications are behaving in different browsers because there are a lot of other users also using different browsers some of the majorly when it comes to uh, come to mac users they use safari and uh, on windows chrome is most commonly used so like that considering that how many uh, much users use the browser is what matters some of the uh, uh, web uh, browsers like opera and all sometimes the chances of people using it is less okay so that's the reason some of the uh, browsers that you can ignore but majorly what uh, people chooses to use right that you can consider okay while testing it we do cross browser testing on different browsers both manual and automated way to do cross browser testing manually we create tests for each browsers and execute it manually on each browser so you can also explain the process like how what things you will consider while performing the cross browser testing so majorly uh, with the same test case also you can attach a field saying that these are the browsers that we will be using to test this particular scenario okay that also you can do rather than creating a different test cases okay otherwise it completely depends on your company if your company wants to have a different test case for each of the browsers you can maintain them also every browser displays 
a website in their own style we usually cannot have all browsers on one machine right so each browser has their own features own features to showcase their unique presence while testing a website we need to ensure that our website is appearing same across all browsers to do this testing we need to have all browsers fortunately there are some tools to perform cross browser testing without testing individually in a manual way so you could be thinking how can we do whether we can install all the browsers on the same machine and perform it no there are certain tools like you can opt for lambda test or browser stack so these are the uh, websites or the application that provides to perform cross browser testing you know you can use multiple browsers there and with different versions also will be there so you can opt for any of them and perform the cross browser testing so that also you have to remember which tool you are using to perf uh, perform this cross browser testing so all this you can talk about when they ask about when you will be performing cross browser testing or how you will be performing cross browser testing okay so going ahead can you briefly explain about mobile application testing and what it includes so when we perform mobile application testing there also it is kind of we will check whether the application works well with multiple devices and versions okay so that is one important thing usability of features on a mobile screen how user friendly it is how the usability of the application is whether all the fields are displaying or not all these things you will be checking as part of this mobile testing testing it on different mobile platforms like android and ios installations and installing launching the application with network without network testing functionality okay all these things that you will consider while performing the mobile application testing so let me give you an example suppose your application okay you have built an application your application supports both android and ios that time you have to perform both android and ios testing right so there are certain uh, applications like emulator and simulators also you can use and in the same way whatever i mentioned this emulator simulator right so you can use browser stack or lambda test some of the applications will provide you the uh, option to select different mobile applications and different browsers also ipad all this you can test it on the same application okay so that way you can perform the mobile application testing and also if you have real device so that is well and good you can talk about it if you are using the real device for testing the web application so these are the things that you have to remember how do you test a customer facing application so this is important right when while uh, you perform testing most of the applications would be a customer facing applications like banking applications or uh, any loan applications or e-commerce applications so uh, most of them could be related to the real time users so with any application that we test we are trying to see if a certain set of requirements are met by the application or not okay so um, first we have to make sure that basic requirement the happy path should be working fine but first by okay uh, sorry but when it comes to a user facing side apart from concentrating on the functionality we also have to look into few usability features maybe performance and security aspect also to the certain extent so all these things that you consider while performing the customer facing application testing suppose in case of e-commerce it is important to check the uh, performance because at the same time lot of people could be using the application so at that time it 
uh, is more important for them and also when it comes to banking application security plays an important role so they can also consider the security uh, how, how secure the application is and the user friendliness is very much important the uh, text whatever we provide and the fields whatever is present that should be understandable by the end user so it should be in simple words it should not be complicated so that the user will get confused so you have to give attention to such things while performing the customer facing application testing so that you can mention about for an example if it is loan management site we need to look at uh, are the new customer able to apply for loan okay is it possible for a new user to apply for loan are the existing customer able to access their loan information if the interest percent applied to the loan amount is correct or not so these are the functional ways as well as from the ui perspective you can verify how user friendly it is and other aspects also you can consider so this is all about the some of the scenario based interview questions we spoke today so hope these series were useful for you and if you have liked this video please do not forget to like this share this and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you for watching bye bye